talk about discrete stochastic processes and uh, without uh, you know spending time on first trying to define uh, stochastic processes and, and on that a discrete stochastic processes uh, you know in abstraction. Uh, I would prefer to um, give you examples and then uh, we will try to come to a conclusion and hopefully uh, you know be able to define uh, and in fact you would have by that, by that time formed your own definition of uh, stochastic process. Um, uh, of course, here we are going to write first talk about uh, discrete stochastic processes. Now, let us just look at one example. A watch selling shop uh, keeps a particular brand of ladies watch right? and the uh, d i let d i denote the demand for this brand in the i th week. So, let us just say that our planning horizon is 3 weeks and so d 1 will be the demand for uh, this particular brand of uh, watches in the first week d 2 in the second week and d 3 will be in the third week right and uh, these are um, you know uh, d i is a random variables because the demands are not uh, uh, a certain commodity because otherwise the job keepers shop uh, job will be uh, the shopkeepers job will be very easy so here d i is are um, uh, uh, random variables and they are identically independently distributed random variables. So, this one simplification has been uh, added here. So, the d i s are uh, not known, uh, they are not uh, certain events, but they are um, they have same distribution and independence. So, that means, the demand in the first week is independent of the demand in the second week and uh, independent of the demand in the third week. Okay. Let n i denote the number of watches on hand at the end of the ith week. So, let us say by Saturday uh, evening, he um, uh, the man takes stock of uh, his um, things that he have uh, that he has on hand and so, n i will be the same particular brand of ladies watch. Uh, he uh, has n i of them. So, that means, n 1 at the end of the first week, n 2 at the end of second week and n 3 at the end of uh, third week. Now, orders placed for watches on Sunday evening um, are identically are sorry uh, are delivered before the shop opens on Monday morning. So, this could be Sunday evening or Saturday evening whatever it is. So, you have, uh, before the uh, new week begins. So, so, on Monday morning before the shop opens the uh, watches are delivered uh, whatever the ordering policy. Okay. Now, suppose the uh, ordering policy followed by the shop owner uh, uh, is as follows. If no watches in stock order 4 watches. That means, by Saturday evening, if he realizes that he does not have any watch of this particular brand, then he will order for uh, 4 watches and they will be delivered by Monday morning. Right. So, that means, if n i is 0, order 4 watches. If n i is 1, that means, if uh, he has 1 watch at the end of the week uh, in stock, then he will order for 2 watches. Okay. And finally, if uh, he has two or more watches left over by the end of the week, then he will not order any. So, do not order. So, this is his policy right? and of course, sales are lost when the demand exceeds the number of watches in stock. So, if uh, there is more demand and you do not have uh, that many watches, then you lose those, uh, uh, that, uh, th those sales. Right? Um, so, fine. So, now uh, let us look at uh, what would be the position uh, in the following week. So, n i plus 1 will be uh, let us say, uh, so this will n i plus 1 will denote the number of watches on hand at the end of the i plus 1th week. And uh, how will you compute n i plus 1 uh, given n i? So, this will be you see if if n i is 0, that means um, at the so this is your i th week and this is your i plus 1th week. right? So, therefore, at this point you had n i watches. Now, if n i is 0, then you ordered 4 and they were delivered by the time your i plus 1 th week started. So, that means, then you will have at the beginning at this point, you will have n i plus 4 watches and then there is demand d i plus 1. So, that means, you would meet the demand and then depending on whether d i plus 1 is so, since n i is 0, you will actually have 4 watches on hand and that is why I have written 4 here. So, uh, actually your this thing will be 
4 minus d i plus 1. And if your demand is more than this, then of course, uh, you will say the max of this, right, because uh, you cannot have negative number of watches. So, either uh, you have 4 minus d i plus 1, if d i plus 1 is less than uh, 4 or you have no watches left at the end of the next week. So, at this point, uh, is if you are able to meet the demand uh, d i plus 1, then whatever the difference that will be the uh, uh, watches on hand at this point, otherwise it will be 0, if d i plus 1 is uh, more than 4, right. Okay. So, similarly, if uh, n i is 2, uh, uh, what were the policies? No, no, n i is 1, sorry, this is n i is 1. So, if n i is 1, then he orders 2 watches. So, uh, this will be uh, n i plus 2 minus again whatever the demand and if this number is uh, positive, then that will be taken as the uh, uh, number of watches on hand at the end of the i plus 1 at week, otherwise it will be 0. So, n i of course, you can write 1 here. So, this is actually max of 3 minus d i plus 1 comma 0. So, whichever number is positive, that number you will take. So, when n i is 1 and similarly, if n i is greater than or equal to 2, then you are not ordering any watches. 2 or more, you do not order. So, your uh, uh, watches at on hand at the beginning of the i plus 1th week um, is n i, n i minus d i plus 1 will be what you are left with at the end of the i plus 1 at week and so it will be again max of these two. So, this is how you can, so you see um, the, uh, the uh, situation at the end of the i plus 1 at week is dependent on your um, situation at the end of the i th week and the demand. So, here are two random phenomena on which your uh, uh, state of the system, if you can want to call it, that means the state occupied by the system at the i plus 1 th week is given to you by n i plus 1, right. And here this is the uh, current state. So, therefore, you can say that uh, here your n i plus 1s are uh, de dependent on just n i and d i plus 1. So, the current demand and the uh, 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 the state in which you were at the beginning of the i plus 1 th week. Right. So, this is uh, sort of trying to show you the dependence, because the, the variables n i plus 1, which we are trying to uh, you know uh, tell us the state of the system at the end of every week. So, uh, this phenomena is dependent on the two random phenomena n i and d i plus 1. So, this is one example and then we will. Uh, so, um, uh, now I can sort of give you a definition here saying that n i is indexed by the number of the uh, week form a discrete stochastic process. So, then when you take these uh, n 1, n 2, n 3. So, these are three random variables and they form a. So, see the thing is that you are uh, giving them an index which is discrete. So, n 1, n 2, n 3 and it, the unit of time can be anything here it is a week, it could be a month, it could be an hour uh, or whatever it is. So, when the, and therefore, the discrete word. So, this is a random phenomena, which is uh, being uh, you know sort of uh, indexed by a discrete time and period and therefore, uh, we will call this a discrete stochastic process. Another example and therefore, uh, you may. So, of course, this and now okay, the next question to be asked is why uh, study this. So, for example, I have just tried to state one or two uh, questions that the shop owner may want to have answered, but of course, there can be uh, uh, many other questions that you can also raise. So, for example, the shop owner is interested in knowing the following long term loss of sales due to his reordering policy. You see, because if he can, if he can by some mechanism find out uh, what what is the uh, uh, sort of estimate it may not be an exact number, but he can estimate the uh, number of sales that are lost. Uh, when this number is negative, that means he is losing out on sales whenever this number is negative. So, if there is a mechanism by which he can find out uh, what is his long term sales uh, uh, loss of sales due to the re, to his reordering policy, because uh, he wants to know whether he really has a good reordering policy or not. Okay. 
then also he may also want to know the effect of changes he makes in his reordering policies in a reordering policy right he may also want to change some of the orders there and then he would want to know okay would that make the situation better for example would it uh, reduce his long term uh, say for long term word i'm using here because you know uh, it takes a while for any system to settle down so we will most of the time when we talk of any stochastic process we want to analyze it we would be talking about um, uh, its long term behavior so, whatever the disturbances and perturbations, they all settle down after a while and then we want to look at the system, because otherwise it is very difficult to uh, you know uh, model um, any such uh, uh, process, you know when there are initially a lot of uh, turbulations or a lot of perturbations, you cannot really uh, analyze or you cannot model such a situation. So, therefore, <coughs> It is a long term loss of sales due to his reordering policies and then he may want to know uh, if he makes any changes, uh, how will that affect his again his revenues. Essentially, he is finally interested in the uh, uh, revenues that he uh, gets. Okay. Now, let us look at another example, which is probably a simpler one. So, there is an automobile manufacturing company and has the policy of assigning its white collar employees. So, white collar employees means who work in the in their offices, office of the sales and so on to the three sections it has. So, the three sections it has are production, uh, uh, HR um, you know handling human resources and sales. So, these are the three and then uh, see we will now look at this mod, uh, uh, example and again give you another feeling about the uh, stochastic processes. So, the three sections are production, human resource and sales. So, these are three dip, uh, sections in the automobile manufacturing company, where he wants to uh, assign uh, the uh, uh, white collar employees and then uh, I mean by he I mean the owner of that uh, manufacturing automobile manufacturing company and uh, there is no set pattern for reassignments. At least the employees do not know. So, there must be something in the mind of the uh, owners, uh, uh, how they would reassign. Uh, so, uh, since there is no set pattern known for the reassignments, one does not know in which section he or she will be assigned next. So, after you have been in one section for a while, certainly you know that you will be transferred, but then you do not know to which one you will be transferred. right? So, the uh, next assignment may depend on the current assignment. It is possible that wherever you are right now, it may have a bearing on where you will be next. So, uh, these are the kinds of. So, then uh, if, if we let x i uh, denote the section assigned during i th 6 month period. So, that means, now you look at one employee's profile. Suppose, just uh, take one uh, employee look at his profile in the sense that you want to keep on measuring. So, uh, your time period is a 6 month time period. That means, when you get assigned to a section, it is for a 6 month period and then after the at the end of the 6 month period, there will be another uh, uh, reass uh, assignment to sections and you may either stay in the same section or you may get transferred to another one. So, anyway, so let x i denote the section assigned during the i th 6 month period. Okay. And then, so the whole process can be that means, the whole process of uh, the sections being assigned to a particular employee can be described by the sequence x 1, x 2 so on. So, as long as you are planning horizon, you will have. So, x 1 will tell you that in the first 6 months, the particular employee is in this section, whatever the value of x 1, then x 2 will tell you the section he is in, in the second 6 month period and so on. Right. And of course, x i can take the possible values. So, let us state, uh, let us uh, number the three sections. So, the first section is production, second section is uh, H r human resource and the third is sales. So, x i can take three possible values, uh, wh whichever the three, the, the three sections. And so, this will describe to you, if you like, you take it up to x 10. So, that means, for over the 5 years, the sequence x 1, x 2, x 3 up to x 10 will tell you uh, the sections to which the particular employee has been assigned. Right? So, um, is a discrete, uh, so this assignment of sections to an employee is a discrete stochastic process and is it is indexed by the periods 1, 2, 3 and so on. Right? So, now you get the meaning that. So, it is something like uh, the process is evolving over time and uh, there is uncertainty about the uh, what the uh, system, what the state will, I mean 
where the system would be uh, after you know each time period one time period is over then where will it be next. So, therefore, there is some, some sort of uncertainty about the whole uh, process and uh, uh, so this is why we are calling it a stochastic process. Now, um, for this particular company uh, an employee may ask uh, the following questions. If an employee is working in sales what is the probability that after two assignments he will be working in sales again. Okay. A particular, this particular employee may want to, uh, uh, to want an answer to this question or for example, if the um, employee is currently in production, how many months must pass on the average before he uh, enters HR, human resource. So, you know as I said again uh, just as for the first example, I am stating some questions, you can also add some more. And the third one for example, is if the employee has been with the company for 4 years, how many times on the average he would have been assigned to HR to human resource, then what percentage of an employee's assignments will be in sales. So, these are the questions and many more. Now, uh, why would these questions be important? Because a prospective employee who is going to join the company can ask questions like this, so that he can judge about his prospects in the company. Basically, he would like to know whether he will professionally be satisfied with the company or not. If he, it turns out that he comes to know that uh, you will most of the time be with sales, then of course, he may not be wanting to uh, you know stay with the company, because he may not be interested in sales and so on. So, I am just giving an example, but there can be many such questions that can be asked. So, the uh, n i's of the first example and x i's of the second example are not independent random variables that you can see, right. Uh, the, um, in the first example, the uh, n i's were the number of uh, uh, particular brand of watches that were left at the end of the week that were in stock. And so, we saw that this was dependent on uh, what your demand is in the following week. And, uh, and depended on your order ordering policies. So, you cannot say that n 1, n 2, n 3 and so on they are independent random variables that you can see that there is some relationship right. And similarly for the x i s uh, it is possible see the whatever the uh, way the uh, uh, organizers or the owners of the company decide to reassign the sections certainly uh, where you were and how long you have been uh, in, in a particular section will have a bearing on where you will be next. So, uh, you can feel that uh, these uh, random variables are not uh, independent right? and therefore, any kind of computations uh, about these random variables uh, will not be a uh, easy thing. Right? So, uh, now we will attempt to uh, define uh, this a stochastic process right? after these two examples. So, any random process for which time can be measured discreetly can be and can be represented and can be represented as a sequence of random variables. So, I should add the word here and can be represented as a sequence of random variables, then this is I uh, will call it a uh, random process or I uh, uh, call it a stochastic process uh, call is called is called a stochastic process. Or very simply, you can simply say it is a sequence of random variables indexed by time. So, a stochastic process and definitely you can see that it is evolving over time and then you want to now uh, look at its behavior. And uh, so, of course, uh, now you see that if you want to answer any of these questions that I have posed and even in the earlier one, then you see uh, you may want to know you would need to know the joint density function of for example, if your planning horizon is 5 years, then you may want to know uh, the joint, you would need to know the uh, joint distribution of x 1, x 2 up to x 10, since they are not independent and therefore, uh, you cannot say that the uh, joint density function of x 1 to x 10 will be a uh, product of individual density functions. So, you will have to need, need to find out and of course, if you are uh, uh, pl planning horizon is much bigger, then uh, you know you can just give a you know, raise your, you know you can throw up your hands and say that you no know, I can't compute a joint density function of so many random variables, right. So, uh, therefore, we need to really uh, uh, look at the 
uh, look at the uh, uh, methods by which we can sort of simplify uh, uh, analyzing such a process or under what conditions can we uh, uh, try to answer uh, questions like this when we are looking at a stochastic process. So, for the um, uh, automobile company, um, just look at the, we can diagrammatically uh, pres, uh, describe the uh, uh, profile of a employee. And so, you see um, here, if the horizontal axis is uh, giving you the time period. So, this is the beginning of the um, planning horizon. So, 0 period, that means the start of the process. Then, this denotes the first 6 month period. This is the second 6 month period, third 6 month period and so on. So, this is what it is. And then here, you have the 3 uh, sections to which the person can be assigned. So, for example, what it is saying is that here in the first 6 months period, he was with HR, right? the second section. And then in the next 6 month period, he got assigned to uh, production, which is your first section. right? I think this is production, this is HR and this is sales. So, then he got assigned to uh, in the second 6 month period, he go, went to sales. And then again after that, he went to uh, your <coughs> sales in the in the next uh, this means that means one year is over this, this is the next six months so therefore you can see that this diagram and here for example um, here from this onwards he continued for two periods consecutively in the um, uh, production section so this uh, you can diagrammatically describe uh, uh, the uh, profile of a uh, employee in the manufacturing company. Now, uh, let us just um, give some more terminology. So, set of all possible values the random variable x i takes is called the state space. So, we always describe. So, whenever wherever the system or the process is whatever uh, situation it is in. So, that will be described by the state space. And normally, what we do is we give it numbers. So, the possible values in the state space we describe by the numbers. So, for example, here the three sections I numbered as 1, 2, 3. So, it is easier because otherwise you cannot go on writing uh, the possible values that the uh, state space contains, right. It may be different, different things. So, we can just distinguish them by the numbers. And so, here for example, this will be uh, x n is i means the state in which the system is at time period n. So, the value of x n. So, if I am describing the my x i's are the variables which are the random variables which describe the process. right? And then when you change uh, the st st that means, when the uh, system changes from one state to another uh, we call such uh, process as the change is called a transition. So, are called transitions. Okay. Now, um, as I said that and we have seen the two examples already uh, simple ones. We saw that the uh, real life situations, the processes will be uh, many, many processes are stochastic, because there are elements of the process, which are uh, which uh, are not, uh, which cannot be determined uh, with certainty. And then uh, we also have seen that, you know, even in such simple examples, your x i's are not independent. So, there, there will be some sort of dependence among the random variables. So, therefore, uh, as I was saying earlier that uh, it will be very difficult to uh, have a combined joint density function of all the possible random variables, which describe the uh, states in which the system can be over a long time period. And so, uh, you cannot just analyze or answer any questions about the process. So, Markov suggested the following simplification. So, he said that the transition from one section to another may depend on the current section occupied. And here I should say the word only. Okay, the transition from one section to another may depend on the current section occupied. So, when we say depend, this is of course, that means the computation of the probability, the probability with which um, the section, uh, this uh, process will transition from one section to another uh, would be, uh, the probability would be. Um, dependent on where you are right now. So, the current section. So, Markov suggested this simplification. Now, in the for example, in the watch, watch shop example, value of n i plus 1 to depend on the values of n i and d i plus 1 only. 
and the way I was describing to you the values of n i plus 1, which was max of uh, the formula I wrote down. So, that the, from there we saw that we were computing n i plus 1 only depending on the values of n i and d i plus 1. So, that was uh, that anyway. So, therefore, according to uh, Markov's uh, definition, this is uh, already satisfying the Markovian property, right. Now, in the uh, uh, so, um, okay. So, when once you have this and then um, that means, in the in the in the um, in the section assignment problem, what we are saying is that, yeah, that means we are saying that uh, uh, if you want to look at uh, x i, the value of x i, then that will depend on. So, the probability that you will go from whatever the value of x i, uh, it will depend on where what is the value of x i minus 1. So, sort of the transition from here. So, this will depend on this and then uh, x i will affect the uh, value of x i plus 1 with certain probability. Right. So, this is the kind of dependence we are only allowing or, or you can say this is a simplification that. So, um, this makes the analysis of stochastic processes which satisfy Markov's property quite tractable and we will see this as we go on we will see that about uh, we can probably answer almost all the questions that I wrote uh, in the beginning about the automobile manufacturing company and uh, the question the kind of questions that an employee may be interested in knowing. So, we should we will be able to answer the questions uh, because uh, if we say that the uh, section assignment process uh, would be uh, would satisfy the Markov property. Right. Now, any stochastic process which satisfies Markov property is called a Markov chain or a Markov process. So, I will be using the word Markov chain or Markov process with the same meaning synonymously. Right. So, now uh, what happens that with the Markov's uh, property being satisfied by a process, then we just need to compute the joint or the conditional probability mass function. Remember, I am talking about dis discrete processes. So, joint, uh, joint or conditional PMF of neighboring x i s is computed. So, it simplifies and therefore, you know when have you have two variables, you can very easily um, compute the joint or the conditional PMF of two variables. And so, uh, with that we can then able to, we are then able to um, analyze the process over long term and whatever it is. So, now if you want to um, formally state uh, Markov's property, that is see uh, essentially what you are saying is probability x n plus 1 is equal to j. That means, at time n plus 1, your system is occupying state j. And if you look at the past history, starting from x 0 is i, then it will be x 1 is some i 1 and so on, x n minus 1 is i n minus 1 and x n is i. So, this is the entire past history. So, um, uh, if, if you are not uh, assuming the Markov property being satisfied by the process, then of course, uh, to answer this, compute this probability, you would need to know the entire past history. But then Markov's property simplifies it and says that this whole thing can be uh, made equal to probability x n plus 1 equal to j, given that x n is i. So, wherever the, oh, so the current state of the system that helps you to determine, so with some probability, where the system will be in the next state, next um, time period. Okay. And so, these are known as one step transition probabilities. Okay and we will call them as p i j. So, now I am here not writing anything else, why because I am now uh, making one more simplification and what we are saying is that um, this is actually equal to probability of x 1 equal to j uh, given that x naught is i. So, that means, uh, the starting uh, the starting state of the system suppose if you were in uh, if the system was in i uh, state i, then the next period uh, th that it is in j. So, we will denote that one step transition probability and we will say that over the uh, long period that the process goes on, this does not change. That means, whether at time period n plus 1, uh, you are considering the change from x um, time period n to time period n plus 1 or you are considering the change from uh, the starting initial state to uh, this first period. So, those probabilities remain the same and that is why uh, the word stationary. So, what we are saying is that the one step transition probabilities are stationary 
And essentially the explanation here is that whatever process you consider, we are saying that uh, after the initial uh, perturbations and so on, uh, the system has settled down to uh, a stationary, uh, this the system has become or the process has become stationary. So, it is not uh, and therefore, these transition probabilities are not um, uh, being affected by where you are considering uh, at what time period you are considering the uh, transition. Okay. Uh, as we go on, we will be looking at lot of processes and a uh, lot of situations, real life situations, where we will see that uh, to assume that your uh, transition probabilities uh, have the stationarity property is not very unrealistic. So, we will continue with the, um, uh, yeah. So, I will just uh, continue with defining uh, and giving you how to compute these probabilities and so on. Or once you have these probabilities, then what can you do with these. So, let us start uh, looking at um, uh, how we will now uh, continue with the, uh, with the analysis of the process. And so, where therefore, what, what we would need first to uh, describe the process and what are the uh, uh, quantities that we will require before we can uh, continue with our analysis and trying to answer the questions related to the um, process. So, if x naught is the, let us say x naught is the present assignment by our notation, right 0. So, this means whatever the value of x naught that tells us the present assignment of the employee. And then uh, we are interested in his next assignment, that is we want to know the value of x 1 uh, in the next uh, time period. So, if suppose x naught is 1, that is the man is currently in production, then x 1 can be 1, 2 or 3, any of the 3 sections uh, he can be uh, assigned to. right? So, that means, uh, you want to know the probability. So, it means this has to be given to you, that is if uh, he is uh, already in, he is he starting his uh, career with x naught equal to 1, that means he is in production right now. And then, what is the probability that he will be uh, again kept in production only. So, x 1 is 1. So, we will call this as a p 1 1. And as I told you that these are one step transitions probabilities and they are uh, we are assuming a stationarity. So, it does not matter whether it is x n plus 1 equal to 1 given x naught x n is 1 or x naught is 1 uh, given that x naught is 1 then x 1 is 1. So, the probability. So, p 1 1 and then similarly you would need to know if uh, x naught is 1 then what is the probability that he will be in h r. Right. So, that probability is p 1 2 and the probability that he will be in uh, sales is uh, given by p 1 3. Right. So, these are the first step transition probabilities. If you know uh, where he is uh, at the beginning of the uh, planning horizon, right? that is if you know x naught is 1, but if x naught is 2, then of course, uh, again uh, the transition probabilities will be different in the sense that uh, now what is his probability of going from 2 to 1. So, that means, he is in h r and then uh, the probability that he will be assigned to production. So, that must be some probability. You see, these are the transition probabilities, which are now describing to us uh, whatever the assignment uh, process is. Okay. And um, so, therefore, again these three uh, transition probabilities p 2 1, p 2 2 and p 2 3 are given to us. And then for uh, if, if x naught is equal to 3, that means, if he is, already, he is currently in uh, sales, then his probability of going to production will be p 3 1. Uh, probability of going to sales will be p 3 2 and probability of going remaining in sales will be given by p 3 3. So, these we call as the, uh, uh, the I am not all the time saying one step transition probabilities, but that is understood. Okay. So, this is transitioning from state. So, here the, these three numbers, these three probabilities give you the transition probabilities of transitioning from state 3 to any of the three states. Right. So, therefore, uh, the process and now of course, uh, we will see that uh, this is not uh, a complete description of the process and we will as we go along, we will find out what more we need, but let us just uh, first look at this. So, now the uh, 9 first step transition probabilities can also be written as a 3 by 3. See, remember because um, uh, whatever the number of states, if the number of states is capital N, then your transition probabilities will be n square because uh, you can go from one state to any of the n states. So, 
therefore, the, you will always have n square numbers. And so, these um, uh, transition probabilities can be written in a matrix form. So, if you have n entries, um, sorry, n states that this system can occupy, then it will be n cross n matrix that you can you can record all these uh, transition probabilities in a n by n matrix. So, here since our states, three states are there, three sections. So, I can record all the nine transition, first step transition probabilities in a 3 by 3 matrix. So, P will be uh, called a transition matrix. Okay. Now, since the man must uh, transition from, let us say, uh, from uh, a production to any one of these uh, uh, sales, either he stays in sale uh, production or he goes to HR or he goes to sales, he must transition to one of the because af after every 6 months, uh, the assignment is uh, announced. So, uh, therefore, uh, these 3 probabilities will add up to 1. right? Similarly, and, uh, and therefore, uh, also another way of, of another way of saying this that these probabilities must add up to 1 is that they are the uh, p 1 1 and p 1 2 p 1 3 describe the conditional p m f. Remember, we have talked about it while talking about um, uh, you know uh, conditional probabilities and conditional expectation. So, this is the conditional p m f of x 1 given that x naught is 1. And so, therefore, since the, this, uh, these three numbers describe the conditional PMF, they must add up to one because, uh, right? So, same way you can argue that the second and the third rows must also add up to one. That means P21 plus P22 plus P23 is equal to one, and P31 plus P32 plus P33 is one. Right? So now, um, any square matrix which has because these are probabilities. So, they have to be non-negative numbers. So, any matrix A, a square matrix, which has all entries or all elements non-negative and the rows add up to 1 can be, uh, we can, will qualify to be a transition matrix. That means, we can say that there must be a stochastic process which can be associated with such a matrix. So, all entries are non-negative and the uh, rows, uh, the elements of a row add up to, of every row add up to 1. Okay. So, this will be, this will qualify to be a transition matrix. Right. Now, another way of looking at uh, this process, because diagrams always help, they fix ideas and uh, I think uh, they also help in the understanding of the uh, process. So, uh, let us see, I will uh, describe the three uh, states by the nodes of this graph. So, first is your production, HR and sales. Okay. And if I am showing it uh, arc from 1 to 2, then this is transitioning from 1 to 2. And of course, uh, I have not entered all the probabilities, but they can be written down here. And so, uh, the arc 2 to 1 will be uh, the transition from, uh, one step transition from uh, your H r to production. Right? And this loop, loop describes that means, you stay in 1. That means, you transition from 1 to 1. So, you do not go anywhere, you continue with the same state. So, um, this way you can uh, look at this and so you can write down the probabilities here also p 1 1, this will be p 2 2 right? and this will be p 2 3. So, this will be p 3 2 and so finally, this will also be p 3 3 and here this will be uh, p 3 1 and this will be p 1 3. So, this diagram also helps you to look at uh, and you can see that uh, currently you can you can transition from for example, from 1 to 2, then you can go from 2 to 3, you can come, come from 3 again you can come back to 2 or you can go from 2 to 2. So, actually you can play around and you can see lot of things that you can do with the, uh, you can see how the transitioning uh, is taking place and so on. But of course, this you can do when your number of states is small and uh, if the number of states is large, then uh, uh, drawing a picture like this may not be a very good uh, alternative. And so, we will have to look at uh, 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 other ways of uh, uh, handling this process. But anyway, this uh, makes the uh, thing look uh, interesting. I mean, the picture is there and you can just see how the process is evolving over time, going from one state to another and going through these arcs. So, you see, uh, we described the uh, first step transition probabilities and through a diagram and so on. 
Now, uh, suppose we want to now look at uh, look at the x 2, the random variable that describes the state of the system at time 2. Right? Now, uh, again I try to show you through the diagram. So, if you look at this for example, you, you start with state 1, that means you start with production and after 2 transitions you are uh, back in uh, production. So, what would that mean? So, the possibilities are that you start with production, then you next period you again transition to production only, that means you stay where you are and then uh, finally, you uh, in the next step you again transition to uh, production. So, that means you continue through. So, this path describes one possibility, which I have written down here. right? And then uh, it could be that you start from production, you go to H R and then again you uh, get transition back to production. So, that will be your second path. So, I am talking now in terms of paths, because you this is how you will when you go for two step transition uh, probabilities, this is what you will have to you will have to compute the probabilities of these paths. And then finally, uh, you will uh, start from production, go to sales and then you are back to production. So, that will be your third path. And so, just to give you uh, and of course, we will continue this uh, discussion uh, in the next lecture also. So, if you look at uh, probability x 2. So, here um, you are actually oh, the arrows are in the wrong direction. So, it should be x 0 to 1 and then x 1 to x 2. Right? You start from here, then you transition to production and again you transition to production from the first period to the second period. And since we have uh, the Markovian property tells us that uh, you know we just need uh, one step transition probabilities. That means, uh, the transitioning from uh, x 0 1 to 1 and then from uh, in the second period from in the first period from 1 to this. So, these are independent and therefore, I can write them as the product of uh, prob the, the transition probability uh, 1 to 1 here in the first period and then again 1 to 1. So, now here again the second uh, property that we have used is the stationarity. So, uh, Markovian property and stationary transition probabilities both tell us that you know the probability of the first path that means, uh, transitioning from 1 to 1 in 2 periods along the first path, the probability is p 1 1 square. And so, we will continue with this kind of computation and then show you very interesting uh, results and then you will see that how uh, far our analysis can go of a stochastic process, which satisfies uh, Markovian property. And of course, we are talking uh, when the stationarity conditions are met.